Good morning from Iceland. We are ready to check out of Pakia campsite, which by the way is one of the greatest campsites we've ever been to. Let's go see more of this incredible country. If you are driving along Kjerlingar Dalsvigur to get to the Pakil campsite, make sure to stop at the parking lot where you can see these information signs because this place is phenomenal for scenery. This is where you'll get infinite views of the ocean, the ravines streaming to the ocean, mountains all around, glaciers, the road to Pakil. Everything here is absolutely beautiful. raining the entire day today but before it started pouring we did manage to hit up two spots there was a cave along the beach which we think that if you don't have enough time you can definitely skip but the canyon was absolutely stunning we even find that in spite of the rain this place was so beautiful with the green cliffs the canyon the waterfalls the blue river it was so beautiful and right now because of this rainy day we are just taking advantage and staying indoors and getting some work done that's right because tomorrow it's actually forecasted not to be raining hoping for some clear skies mm -hmm. as we will be hitting up about six to eight different locations around the island all in a single day so we're definitely going to be turning in early tonight mm -hmm. and then tomorrow we're going to show you guys some incredible places One thing we did not realize, and that's something for you guys to know, is that there is a 900 Icelandic Kronos fee in order to actually reach the Black Sand Beach. And that's where you wanna go for the optimal photo spot. Now, if you are camping there, it was 2,000 Icelandic Kronos, right? 2,000. 2,000, and, and that includes the, to come over here? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. So that's <laughs> one thing to know. If you guys do camp, I think it's, yeah, you pay the 2,000, and you get to come here. If not, it's 900. For which, walking and driving. Yes, for walking and driving. So that is not too bad, I would say, in order to catch this insane view. We decided to go to Stocksness in the morning and we were so glad that we did because the low clouds, the warm hues and the reflection on the sand 
was just incredible. Now normally you would want to go one way on the ring road as that is the most time efficient but be prepared to go backwards like we are mm -hmm. because right now yeah we are actually heading west and we finally got to Diamond Beach and we're going to be hitting up the Yokusara Glacier where they also have lagoon uh, boat cruises which is really really cool. The blue water is very illuminated right now and the low clouds against the mountains are just so epic so we we're really excited to see what the ice looks like and the blue glaciers. Jason and I have been really loving the fact that Lava Car Rentals has these 4x4 camper vans just because we're able to get to more remote areas where we get the view completely to ourselves and we're able to enjoy places like this glacier right here. we hit and this place definitely took us by surprise by being one of the more beautiful waterfalls we've seen in Iceland yet. The trail to the falls is not very well defined but when you get there you'll see that the base of the falls is so blue and you can actually walk behind it. Now we think that the best spot to see it is from the top so just do a little short scramble you'll reach the top you'll see both falls conjoining at the bottom and you'll see the valley behind and the top mountains towering above. But right now we're heading north to Valnes. We went from black sand on the south coast to pebbles on the east. It was really sick coming over here to Valnes Nature Reserve Beach and just enjoying the crashing waves and checking out the pebbles. We needed to get to Engel City or to stay overnight at a campsite in town and instead of taking the shortcut on Highway 95, we decided to take Highway 1 and continue on the ring road and this was absolutely something that we did not regret at all because of the views of the mountains and the ocean side as well. And after that we woke up really early at 5 a.m. this morning to get to Stuttgart.
As some of you might know, Stuttgart Canyon is a very popular site that you can see in Iceland and it's known to having a crystal blue river flowing through the canyon and the basalt columns on the side. But unfortunately today, because of the heavy rainfall that we had to go through late September, the river is really gray brown, but with a little bit of editing magic, you can get something like this. One really important thing to note when you're coming to Studlegill is that there's actually two different spots where you can catch views of the canyon. One of them is as you're continuing along Highway 923, you actually reach a campsite. And from there, there's a series of stairs that you can climb down and then you actually get a viewing platform and that's where you get to see the canyon. However, the views there are quite limited. So what we recommend is that when you're driving down Highway 923, there's actually going to be a sign for you to turn left. Make sure you take that road. Turn left, continue across the little bridge, and then turn right. As you're turning right, here's where you'll reach a little bit of rocky terrain, but most vehicles should be able to handle it. Our 4x4 from Lava Car Rentals managed it perfectly, so we're super happy about that. As you continue down that little gravel type road, then you reach a parking lot. From there, it's just a little hike, which is where we are on right now. And then you actually get to be on the other side of the canyon. And from there, you get a spectacular view. And that's the place that you guys want to go when you come to visit Studlegill. locations you can see it from. You can take Highway 864 leading you to the east side. This place is where we saw a lot of photographers because you can see the entire waterfall and the whole until the base. We took 862 which was definitely a smoother and shorter ride here and this place has walkways, defined trails, staircases and huge viewing platforms. But right now we're going to be heading to Selfoss which is only about 600 meters from Datifoss. After J.D. Foss, we kept going west and finally hit up Midvatn, where there's a lake and tons of geothermal activity. We saw the Krafla Crater. We also saw Barir, where there's tons of geothermal bubbling mud pools with a lot of color. And we also visited the Midvatn Nature Baths, where they have uh, the milkiest, bluest water, where we had a warm dip to relax. And now we're here enjoying a coffee, enjoying some time working online because tomorrow we are heading over to the West Fjords.